This program is sponsored by Auckland City Council. 9,461. The number of businesses in the Central Business District. 78,480. The number of people who work in those businesses. Coming up next. The world's most amazing bridge, a wonderful piece of architecture, a heroic bridge, a great icon for, for good design and, and uh, yeah, the city of Sales. And by putting that together, we can sort of go forward to the rest of the world and say we are the pure New Zealand. We are you know, thinking forward. We're putting these great architectural statements forward and it's, you know, it's, it's going to attract people to the city. Next week. Number 5 out of 215, Auckland's international ranking for quality of life, The Missing Voice. There is a $1.3 million study to look for a viable harbour crossing option commissioned by Transit New Zealand, Auckland Regional Transport Authority or ARTA, North Shore City Council and Auckland City Council. It is spearheaded by study director Richard Hansey who is a former Transit New Zealand Regional Director. Voices of discontent are emanating from some quarters. They say millions and billions of public dollars are at stake and there seems to be surreptitiousness in the way things are being presented and options are hurried through with no public involvement. Well, my concerns about the second harbour crossing really is the fact of the lack of consultation by the public. It seems time and time again that the authorities just take control of these huge pieces of public infrastructure and just have an intention to ramroad through what they want. I think it's time that we engage the public in genuine, open, transparent um, dialogue about this very important issue. Now, there has never been a cost-benefit analysis that public money going to, going to private contractors is a more efficient use of our public money. I believe that the public needs to be aware and involved in the harbour crossing debate because um, you know a little common sense from the public can be very very helpful in these matters. That's what I was about to drive at. Where is the involvement of the public? When was the public consulted on this? Well, I'm not entirely sure about that. There's been um, quite a lot of publicity. Um, um, I'd have to check about whether there has been a formal um, round of consultation with the public. There's certainly been a lot of publicity and I've certainly received a lot of helpful correspondence from members of the public but this is still very early days um, but it would be helpful um, for the public to be involved um, um, and of course to be very aware of what is at stake so programs like yours can only be helpful in this regard. Now there's a regional land transport committee which involves every council, you know, you've got an ARC, you've got Transit, you've got ARTA, um, you even get down to the on-tracks, um, ARTNL, I mean there are a myriad of organisations all saying they want to address Auckland's problems. Um, there's not a rush for people to produce the checkbook. Um, Transit and I realise there's quite a bit of history to um, the Transit Auckland City ARC relationship and I guess you can understand it from their point of view that there's competition for the, um, you know, for the dollars that are spent. Auckland has always been difficult and uh, I think that people down in Wellington um, uh, would, would frighten the hell out of them if, uh, if all the councils and the ARC went to Wellington and said we have agreed this is what we want. Uh, because it would be a very, very powerful political lo lobby and at the moment um, you get, you know, you get um, very much differing uh, signals coming forward you know, and I noticed in the paper this morning, I mean Rodney were um, you know, talking about how ARC were, were screwing up um, their council because of the land designations that they were imposing on Rodney. 
um, you know, you can have some sympathy for that. I mean, you've got all these layers of bureaucracy, and one would hope out of the uh, out of the Royal Commission that eliminating some of those layers would be an absolute top priority and would surely make for a far more efficient um, setup uh, and also far more efficient decision making. Somewhere to start the discussion. If you just say, give us your ideas, we could have a million ideas come in, which would get nowhere. What they want to do is say, after evaluation, the experts evaluating what is feasible, technically possible, what is uh, probably the most efficient option, when they come out with what that is their recommendation, it will go out to public concern. And everybody can then have a say on, on, on how it should be. Uh -huh. But wouldn't it be, since we are spending $1.3 million just for the study itself, to come to the idea of a preferred option, then why aren't we involving the public? Because as I say, if you ask the public how would you like to get across the harbour or what is your options, you would have thousands of ideas, you would have all sorts of things. You, you, you would be a, a chaotic consultation process because where do you start? Some people would be suggesting uh, a, a monorail going across the harbour and some would be, uh, you know, you name it, there'd be all sorts of things. What we're trying to do is say this is perhaps the preferred and then from there people can come in with their ideas as to that could work, that might not work, these are the different things we, we believe. But you've got to, most of these sort of, this is a very, very big project, you have to start somewhere in order to then engage the public as to whether it's a good idea or not. There has been no consultation in terms of the study that's taken place to date. The study is built on a number of historical studies that have, uh, that have occurred. It's also considered new data, new technologies, considered the impacts of increased public transport, travel demand measures in coming up with the, with the three options. As say, there, is, there has been no formal public consultation process, but certainly the councils and transit has been sharing the um, the outcomes of their studies, those have recently been reported in, in the Herald, but it is primarily a route protection exercise. But don't you think it is a very important vital factor that public consultation needs to be conducted uh, for such a thing? Well, public consultation is uh, in terms of the, the Wynyard Quarter plan change. If, if the preferred option is found to go through Wynyard Quarter, that will certainly be part of the public consultation. Public will be able to provide their opinion as to what they believe is appropriate in terms of the, uh, the option being put forward. Auckland is just totally relied, uh, reliant upon fossil fuels to cross the harbour and how on earth can we ever become a sustainable city if we're just so reliant upon fossil fuels just to cross the city? This, this scheme that we're talking about, it will release about three and a half kilometres of waterfront. Transit are sit is sitting on more of Auckland's waterfront than the ports of Auckland are. Now we've got to remember that and we've got to look at transit and say, well look, you know, is this motorway necessary? When you look at the motorway in front of St Mary's Bay, it's creating about a 1.1 kilometre dogleg for what would be a direct trip across the harbour. If you consider that we're taking 80 million trips across the, the existing harbour bridge today, on a future bridge it would be the same if not more. So 80 million times one and a half, or 1.1, if you do the equation there, you've got to get over 100, 100 million kilometres. That, that trip would be about 1.2 kilometres less than the existing trip of going across the Harbour Bridge. Now if you multiply 80 million times 1.2 kilometres, it gives you 100 million kilometres. That's 100 million, million kilometres that Aucklanders could save in, in travel every year if we had a new crossing that went from Wynyard Point across to Onewa Road. Public money is being squandered by, con by I suppose, um, consultants who keep taking control of these projects and really changing it to suit their own needs. My concerns really is that these huge public infrastructure projects should be undertaken with the public's involvement and in a timely manner. 20 years is ridiculous. Everything in Auckland has changed over 20 years. The lack of investment in capital infrastructure is really a crime. We've all been paying our rates for the last, well, 100 years, but 20 and 30 years, and really the progress on these big infrastructure projects projects have not occurred. I think it's time the public were told why and that these bureaucrats were held accountable. 436,600, the present population of Auckland City. The study team has narrowed its choice to three options. 
with absolutely no public opinion involved. Ever since the formation of the study team, or a little before that, there has been no public consultation. The will of the paying people and the need for differences of opinion to surface has been sidelined. The voice of the people has been silenced. Public hearings took place five to nearly ten years ago. Effectively, Transit is seeking to fast-track the decisions on the crossing as they want to get a Notice of Requirements, an NOR, out before March to ensure they protect options over Wynyard Point. To meet this deadline, they announced a long list in November 2007, a short list by December last year, and it is likely they will be down to the final option by the end of this month. To do this, they will not be doing new consultation they'll be seeking leverage off old consultation. Back then, the city was tranced by a rather bogan roads, roads, roads mantra. The Eastern Motorway was on the books, and may well be again now. Climate change was not on the lips of thinking Aucklanders. We did not have commitments towards the electrification of the rail system, and we thought the old Harbour Bridge would be standing up forever. Times have clearly changed, but transit has not. It is important to hear the public voice on this matter. The crossing decision will have huge ramifications for the future of Auckland and could potentially have very negative implications if the current myopic stance is taken. The past few months have gagged public concerns and their ability to respond to this critical factor in the shaping of future Auckland. This replacement bridge option would connect Wynyard Point, the tank farm, with the Oniwa Road interchange. The bridge would support the same eight lanes of traffic, a cycleway, a walkway and dual rail tracks in its centre. The rail tracks could initially be a dedicated busway and enable evolution of the northern busway to rail. The replacement bridge is twice the length of the current bridge. This will enable the same height to be reached, allowing ships to pass underneath, but provide a softer gradient to enable future electrified rail crossings. It is critical this crossing is on the western side of Britomart, as a western hole punched through Britomart will enable it to become a through station, rather than the current cul-de-sac, increasing its capacity by 300%. This replacement bridge will be funded by the release and redevelopment of 3.4 kilometres of waterfront land in St Mary's Bay and Northcote. Transit's motorways sit on more prime waterfront land than the ports of Auckland. It is critical for Auckland to be better connected with the Waitamata. The St Mary's Bay motorway and current location of the Harbour Bridge crossing would have been seen as ludicrously stupid if proposed today. We should be using this opportunity to remove it finally. The 1.1 km St Mary's Bay dog leg carries most of the 80 million annual trips across the bridge. It costs Aucklanders 100 million kilometres in additional travel. This extra travel is producing annually 12,000 tonnes of toxic emissions into homes in St Mary's Bay and Northcote. The idea of a tunnel is ridiculous. This will be effectively just another clip-on solution. The cost of building a tunnel is similar to a bridge. The operational cost of a tunnel is five times that of a bridge. You cannot walk or cycle through a tunnel. The Western Ring Route, State Highway 20, will carry most of the through Auckland traffic, so the next crossing will only be delivering people to central Auckland. Any additional lanes for traffic will add greater pressures on the Auckland CBD, dramatically increasing congestion and demands for more car parking buildings. This will not enable Auckland to evolve into a great city. It will make it a ghetto. All growth should be taken up with public transport. Rail carries 50 times the number of people as a motorway does for the same amount of land. Public transport delivers pedestrians to the cities. Great cities are built around its people, not its cars. Transit are now advancing the matter of a cycleway clip-on for the Harbour Bridge to enable them to shortly advance tunnel arguments without a case being made for cyclists. Clearly, the old bridge is ugly enough with the current two failing clip-ons to warrant a third clip-on. This reeks of a number eight wire mentality. New Zealand must snap out of this lowbrow utilitarian thinking if it wants to be respected globally. 
A Mechanics Bay option, proposed under stealth by Auckland City Council officers, is effectively the Eastern Motorway in disguise. Join the dots to AMETI and you have Hobson Bay under tarmac. The replacement bridge offers the opportunity for an heroic cable stayed bridge, a great piece of architecture to celebrate the centenary of Anzac Day in 2014. This has potential to offer greater economic advantage to Auckland than hosting a Rugby World Cup and America's Cup combined. It will create 10,000 jobs. It's just outrageous. Of course, the oil industry and the road lobby and the road association, they are using public money really for their own profit. And I think this is really why our public transport system was consciously run down since the 1950s. You know, it was, a, it was an Auckland City Council Act that got rid of our electric tram service, which in Auckland was second to none. I think it's time the bureaucrats took another look at light electric rail tram services all throughout the Auckland uh, Isthmus and that would be a way to keep these costs down. Roads, roads and more roads is not the answer to, um, to uh, climate change or controlling the environmental devastation that's going on. Do you have any environmental concerns from North Shore point of view? Well I do. If there was a bridge built it would have a huge environmental impact on the North Shore for the roads leading up to the bridge and uh, places like Northcote, Northcote Point. If another bridge was built there, huge impact on our communities. Could be hundreds and hundreds of houses affected by that. Whereas a tunnel, in my mind, a tunnel disappearing under the harbour underground and through has a much lesser environmental impact. Transit New Zealand needs to take a long hard look at its investment. You know I want to know why the investment is going into roads and private transport when it's so obvious we need an integrated and efficient public transport system. You know it's not hard but there's a lack of political will because of course you know the profitability is with the oil companies, the car manufacturers and the road construction companies. Really public consultation is needed now to bring these new issues back on the table and to really show the bureaucrats the public knows what's going on they can huff and puff all they want but the bureaucrats really don't have a right to spend our money in inefficient manners. Uh, I think the general consensus at the moment is, is moving towards a tunnel crossing uh, I think another harbour bridge would be very difficult in terms of the environment in terms of access to both ends of a bridge and also the effects on the existing bridge to have a second bridge there uh, would not necessarily be the nicest thing for the harbour and a tunnel would probably solve a lot of, uh, of the issues. But uh, it is seen that uh, tunnel has the problem of uh, being five times having more operational uh, costs than maintaining the overbridge. It depends what sort of tunnel it is. Um, uh, conceptually, some people have been suggesting a, a car tunnel and a bus tunnel and uh, to take trucks and all that sort of thing. Uh, that could be correct. It could be considerably more than a bridge. My idea, my personal idea, is I would like to see it just simply being a rail tunnel and a tunnel uh, linking through to uh, the uh, rail network in Auckland City and beyond to Manukau and out to West Auckland uh, so that we would have rail coming across the North Shore uh, and if that's the case you're talking a much smaller tunnel uh, and a much more condensed tunnel than a large tunnel taking multi-lane traffic. The input that is being taken for consideration from the public side is about 10 years old actually. Well, yes, you, you make a good yes. Well, you make a good point about that. There, I mean, th there's been a, quite a lot of consultation with the public. I recall back in 1999, um, and as you say, that's some years ago now. And um, I think uh, somewhere in this process, uh, there needs to be um, provision made for another round of, of, of public input. Um, um, it's not a matter of holding things up because construction work on a crossing would not be starting for some years yet. Um, there are other major projects with a higher priority. However, um, um, uh, public involvement, in my experience, is always helpful uh, in adding value.
but to the, a project. But the choice has already been narrowed down to two yes. choices. So without the public's involvement out there. Well, um, that's that's a fair point. Um, the as you say though, the um, there was quite a lot of public involvement a few years ago, um, and uh, and essentially um, th th that I think informs the current process. But again, as you make the point, that may be a little out of date. And um, it would be very, very useful, in, in my view, um, to enable another round of, of public consultation in uh, this project. It's a really interesting issue. I don't think the ARC is lacking in vision. I think the bureaucratic system of reports and consultation and private contractors and vested interests is what is hamstringing the system. I've seen some of these transport reports basically on the bus system and they are written by bureaucrats with very biased political perspectives. I think it's time that confidentiality in Auckland City Council and the ARC were taken off all business operations and so that private companies don't have an opportunity to milk the public for huge profits. And so I, I don't just blame the ARC for a lack of vision. I say that the bureaucrats within those structures politically must not be in a position to manipulate the system for their own political persuasion. Why don't we do it right from the beginning itself so that you know we don't uh, jeopardize uh, its chances uh, coming in at the right time uh, being available to the members of the public. Yeah, well we're certainly looking to, in terms of public transport and this particular crossing, interacting with all the other projects which are currently underway. Well, you know, I really put the blame at this fair and squarely at the Labour Party, who took off the controls on imported cars. We have become Japan and Asia's dumping ground for automobiles. It's really time they took a responsibility. You know, I'm sick of the fact that they allow private enterprise to, to profit in one hand while we, the public, pay for trying to clean up the clean air. It's, it, it's just lip service to climate change. If the Labour Party and National were serious about dealing with the environmental crisis, they would stop the importation of cheap cars, we would manage the car um, numbers that we have at the moment, and we would look to encourage the public to move to the private, uh, to the public transport because it is light, efficient and uh, integrated. So from my perspective, we have to stop this unending amount of automobile just being allowed to cheaply come into New Zealand and I mean you know I'm one of those people who had a car um, when I was 15 but the thing was it was a, 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 a 30 year old car at the time we learnt to maintain cars and in this day and age a free-for-all free market from my perspective isn't okay when it's our health and our environment that's now at risk a, a bit of common sense would be good through all of the political bodies the ARC the Auckland City Council and central government together they have to use our um, collective um, rate and tax take to benefit the public, not to encourage private sector development at the cost of all others. This program was sponsored by Auckland City Council. 559,700, the predicted population of Auckland City in 2026. This program is sponsored by Auckland City Council. 9,461 the number of businesses in the Central Business District. 78,480, the number of people who work in those businesses. Coming up next. The world's most amazing bridge, a wonderful piece of architecture, a heroic bridge, a great icon for, for good design and, and uh, yeah, the city of sales. And by putting that together, we can sort of go forward to the rest of the world and say, we are the pure New Zealand. We are you know, thinking forward. We're putting these great architectural statements forward. And it's, you know, it's, it's going to attract people to the city. Next week. Millions of public dollars are at stake. And there seems to be surreptitiousness in the way things are being presented. And options are hurried through with no public involvement.
Well, my concerns about the second harbour crossing really is the fact of the lack of consultation by the public. It seems time and time again that the authorities just take control of these huge pieces of public infrastructure and just have an intention to ramroad through what they want. I think it's time that we engage the public in genuine, open, transparent um, dialogue about this very important issue. Now, there has never been a cost-benefit analysis that public money going to, going to private contractors is a more efficient use of our public money. I, I believe that the public needs to be aware and involved in the uh, harbour crossing debate or is, can only be helpful in this regard. Now there's a regional land transport committee which involves every council, you know, you've got an ARC, you've got Transit, you've got ARTA, um, you even get down to the on tracks, um, ARTNL, I mean there are a myriad of organisations all saying they want to address Auckland's problems. Um, there's not a rush for people to produce the chequebook. Um, Transit and I realise there's quite a bit of history to um, the Transit Auckland City ARC relationship and I guess you can understand it from their point of view that there's competition for the, um, you know, for the dollars that are spent. Auckland has always been difficult and uh, I think that people down in Wellington um, uh, would, would frighten the hell out of them if, uh, if all the councils and the ARC went to Wellington and said... Because, um, you know, a little common sense from the public can be very, very helpful in these matters. That's what I was about to drive at. Where is the involvement of the public? When was the public consulted on this? Well, I'm not entirely sure about that. There's been um, quite a lot of publicity. Um, um, I'd have to check about whether there has been a formal um, round of consultation with the public. There's certainly been a lot of publicity, and I've certainly received a lot of helpful correspondence from members of the public but this is still very early days um, but it would be helpful um, for the public to be involved um, um, and of course to be very aware of what is at stake so programs like your Number 5 out of 215, Auckland's International Ranking for Quality of Life, The Missing Voice. There is a $1.3 million study to look for a viable harbour crossing option commissioned by Transit New Zealand, Auckland Regional Transport Authority or ARTA, North Shore City Council and Auckland City Council. It is spearheaded by study director Richard Hansey who is a former Transit New Zealand Regional Director. Voices of discontent are emanating from some quarters. They say millions and billions